What's up everybody, Kellen from Action Backers here. Hopefully you're doing well. I'm super excited because today I'm gonna to show you how to use the power of Python and an awesome library called Pandas to scrape historical NHL data and create a winning data set. Whether you're a hockey fan or you just wanna learn more about web scraping and data analysis, this tutorial is gonna be for you. Without further ado, let's get into it. Hopefully you're still with me because now it's time for the fun part. So obviously we're, we're getting set up and understanding the basics. We'll, we'll try to move a little more quickly now, but essentially now we're going to use these dates to actually get the historical team data. So to start with, um, we're going to look at the site that we're going to use, which is natural stat trick. So I don't know if you've heard of this, but it's a site that I use all the time. It's an awesome site. And this is it. So the, the URL, essentially, I've, I've opened it up already to a table and I've, I've done some filtering. So I've, I've added in just the from and to. So we want last season, regular season, even strength, all scores. And then I use rates because it normalizes things to per 60. And that makes it easier to work with um, when you're doing your modeling. So the URL uh, for this... And again, this is in the, the uh, blog post as well. Um, and I'll link it down below. Looks like this essentially. And let me just uh, put in a string. So essentially it's just the, the team table and then you can see the parameters, right? So from season through season, uh, the type situation is even strength. The scores, all scores, as we mentioned, we're using rates, so rate equals Y team all teams and then a few of these are, are built in which we don't need to worry about and then the, the last the last ones and these are where we're going to focus is this fd and td and so what this means is fd equals and td equals this is from date and to date because right now if we look at the games played this is 82 so this is the stats for an entire season and of course, we don't want the stats for the entire season. We want it game by game. So to do this, we're actually going to make our URL dynamic. And we're going to use something called an F string, which is stands for formatted string literal, which you don't need to know. Um, but essentially, it's you just prefix your string with an F, and then it will allow you to use curly braces to input variables. So um, as an example, we can just do this. So here we're going to set a variable um, as an example with the name of Alice, the age of 30. And then we're going to use an F string uh, to print a string with the variable. So you can see here how it looks. We're just using the print function. And so we have the F and then we have our sentence in parentheses or in uh, we're using single quotes, sorry. Um, and it just says, hello, my name is and then uses the uh, the curly braces and it's using the name variable and then I am age years old for 30 right fairly straightforward if we run that it prints it out exactly what we would expect makes sense I hope so so what we're gonna do is we're going to create a variable for this FD equals and TD equals and all we're gonna do is call it date Okay. And so for now, let's say date, we'll say 2021, 10, 12, which was the, the first day of the season last, last season. And then we're going to add here and we're going to use date. And of course, because we want it one day at a time, our from date and our to date will be the same date. And we'll say date here as well. This isn't going to work yet. Um, there's a few things we need to do. So we're gonna, first we're gonna just turn this into a variable uh, itself. So let's just call it URL. Uh, actually, let's call it NHL URL since we're already using URL up here or we were using URL up here. Even though they're in separate cells, separate code blocks, uh, you can still reference the, U, the uh, variables. So you don't wanna, if we called this URL, it would overwrite this, this uh, variable, which 
for our purposes is technically fine but if you ever wanted to like say you were you built a big function at the end to do a bunch of loops where you were replacing this 2022 with a variable and you were going to loop through and grab like four or five seasons at a time you wouldn't want to name both of these url because you would run into an issue so for simplicity's sake i'm just going to call it nhl url and then of course i have to add the f at the beginning to denote that it's an f string and now if we say nhl dfs we'll call it uh, and then we do pd dot read html and we pass in this nhl nhl url variable now it should just return the games from that one day and it looks like it did there were two games that day so 14 pittsburgh tampa seattle vegas and we can check that this works if we change this to 13 and run it again you can see the team's update so awesome so now we're going to put this all together and to do this we're going to first set up a few variables so first thing we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this date variable we're not going to use this um and we're going to we're going to clean these up for for now so um we're actually going to start by using nhl url and we're going to start it as an empty string okay and then we're also going to create a variable called end date and this is just going to be dates minus one and the reason we do this is again this is indexing so you can index backwards as well and so this is referencing remember our dates our dates array um, or list if you have an unknown amount of games which in a season maybe one season there's 120 or 182 uh, uh, days with games and the next season it's 184 or whatever if that's unknown doing minus one will return the last date so rather than having to count each time so you could just do um, len i think is the python syntax and then dates and this will return yeah this will return the number of dates um which is 189 so you could i mean technically do um end date is equal to dates at index um 188 right which would be the 189th but again this can fluctuate year to year and we don't want to have to manually calculate this so if you do dates minus one it will it will just return the last date if you did dates minus two it would return the second to last date and so you'll see why we need this in a second so i'm just going to get rid of that and okay so we have our end date is equal to the dates uh array minus one all right and i, I apologize if i if i keep saying array instead of instead of list i'm predominantly a javascript uh, programmer and in javascript we use array um, anyways so and then the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to create um, a variable called output oops output path and this is just going to be um, the path that you want to save as your csv so um, you can just call it, you know, NHL data dot CSV. I already have um, a file called this. So maybe I'll just call it uh, YouTube demo. Um, the important thing here though, you can call it whatever you'd like and it will save this in whatever, um, whatever current directory you're already in. And so now that we have our output path and i'm just going to copy this or cut this um we'll use this in a second so we have our our url is instantiated to a, a blank array we have our end date which is just our dates list minus one and then we have our output path so now what we're going to do is we're going to actually loop through the dates and we're going to for each date we're going to create that new URL using the date. So to do that, we're gonna use what's called a for loop. So we're just gonna say for date 
in dates. Again, dates is referencing this list up here that we grabbed earlier. This date can technically be called whatever you'd like. If you wanna call it X or fun times or whatever, no problem. But it makes sense because it's one date in a, in a list of dates. So we're gonna use this and then colon. And the thing with Python that you need to know, indentation matters. So oftentimes if you run into errors, especially if you're writing like a loop, make sure that you're checking your indentation. It's very annoying, but um, as long as you follow along with how I have it, you should be good. So the first thing we're gonna do is, as I mentioned, we're going to populate NHL URL with our dynamic date. So to do that, we're just gonna paste what we had before, right? So now we have our NHL URL is equal to that long string, and now it's gonna use this date and add it in here and here. Make sense? So after we do that, we're gonna do a check. And technically you could do this check before you populate the NHL URL, it doesn't really matter. And all we're gonna do, and I'm just, I'm writing this so you can see it. You don't have to add these comments. Um, remember, this is just human readable. It doesn't affect or impact the code. So we're just gonna say if the date, remember the date we're referencing from the list of dates is earlier or equal to end date, which remember the last date, then proceed with the next step else end. And the reason we want to do this is obviously we don't want this to go on forever, right? So we're going to check. And as long as the date we're, we're using is before the last date, then we'll keep going. Um, and then if it's equal to the last date, it will keep going. But if it's greater than the last date, the loop will end, the program will, will finish. And so to write that, we're just going to say exactly what we wrote in our comment. So we're going to say if date is less than or equal to end date, then we want NHL DFS is equal to pd.read HTML. And this is exactly what we did earlier, right? And we'll, we're gonna pass in whatever the, the NHL URL is in, in this iteration through the loop. We're also going to say index call equals, and then we can say NHL DF equals NHL DFS zero so this should all feel very familiar we've we've we did this in our our first part when we're getting the dates and then we've already looked at examples here as well so this is not nothing new now after we do that we are going to add a date column based on the current game date because um the stats that we're, we're looping through, we're not actually, they don't actually have the date on them because the date is part of the query parameter. So to be able to, if we reference um, our, our outcomes here, we're just gonna append this, um, this column. And so you can see that we'll have the date. And this, this can just be useful, especially if you're working with multiple seasons of data, you wanna know the, the date. So all, all we're, we're doing in, in this part of code is we're literally just tacking this column um, onto the end and making sure that it, it displays the date. And again, this is just a common writing. So yeah, so we're gonna base on the current game date. And to do that, all we have to do is NHL DF date. And so remember uh, um, above when we were formatting the date in our first list, the date already existed, so it just formatted it. Here it doesn't exist, so it will create that column. And all we're gonna do is the date is going to be equal to the date, whatever the current date in the list, this iteration of the list is. Hopefully that makes sense. And then the last thing we need to do, um, because obviously when this loops through, we need it to update the URL, get that, U, that data from the, the URL, into the data frame. And before it does the next one, we now need to put that data somewhere, right? Because if if we don't put the data somewhere, then it's just gonna, you'll, you'll end up with, ultimately when the program finishes, you'll have only the last day worth of games. So to do this, we're going to uh, use a handy function and we're gonna say nhl underscore df dot two CSV. 
So very self-explanatory. We're gonna pass in parameters. So the first one is gonna be our output, output path, which again is a variable we set up here. And then it takes a few more arguments. And these arguments are very important. So the first one, we're gonna say mode equals A. And don't forget that this needs to be a string. So you have to have your, either your single or your double quotes around it. And what this does is this puts it into append mode. So by default, it will be in just write mode. And what that would mean is, again, the first time through on, on so uh, October 12th, it would copy all the games from October 12th into the CSV. But then when it looped around and grabbed all the games for October 13th, it would just overwrite all the October 12 games. So we'd be in the same predicament as before where it would just it would only return the last day's worth of games when the program is ending. So by adding this A, it means if there are things there, don't overwrite it, add it to the next empty row. And then we're going to say header equals not OS. And OS, remember, way at the very beginning, we imported OS. And this is just a way to check if the CSV exists. So that's the other thing. Don't create the CSV first. Um, just do it exactly how, it, uh, how I've explained it here. Okay, so not OS dot path dot exists. And then we're, again, we're going to, in parentheses, pass the uh, output path. And then lastly, again, as some formatting, we're gonna say index equals false. But let's talk through this, um, this header thing first. So basically what this is saying is, if this file doesn't yet exist, then add the headers. And the headers are these, right? The actual headers. But if this file exists on every, um, then don't add the headers. And the reason you want that is because obviously at the very beginning you want the headers, but you don't want it to add in headers after every day, right? So you'd have like all of these headers and then you'd have the, the first two games from the 12th, and then you have all the headers again, and then the games from the 13th, so on and so forth. Just makes things very cumbersome and ugly. So this is just a way to dynamically make sure that you get the headers at the top, but then it's gonna skip the headers every time thereafter. And this index equals false, this is totally optional. Um, all this is doing by saying index equals false is if you were to have index equals true, then um, in your CSV, there would be another column uh, to the left and it would literally just be the index of each thing, uh, which is, you might find it useful. So if you want, if you want, uh, if you want the index for some reason, then you can just omit this argument or turn this to true. Um, but if you omit it, it will default to true. But I can't see any useful reason as to why you would want this index. So it just creates um, a cleaner data set, essentially. So I recommend leaving it to false. And so now we should be good to go, basically. So we're, we're um, let's just recap. So we're going in and for each date in the dates list, we're gonna dynamically populate this URL. And then we're gonna look at that if if the assuming that the date is not late, greater than the the end of the list we're going to read that html table and then we're going to add in a date column and then we're going to write that data frame to our csv okay now important a few more things we must we must add sleep and then rand int and then 10, 25. And if you'll recall again, we imported rand int and sleep at the very beginning. And what this does is this is going to pause our program on each loop, which is what the sleep does. We're using the rand int to randomize the time that it pauses for. And 10 and 25 means that it will pause for anywhere randomly between 10 and 25 seconds. And that seems like a lot, 
But the reason for this, and this is incredibly important, please listen to this. If you don't do this, you run the risk of being blacklisted your IP, and then you won't be able to use this at all. This will simulate human action because if you were to run this without the sleep function, the it's thousands of games and the server load on the, the website that we're, we're getting this data from would become overwhelmed and it would potentially crash the site or it would create a terrible experience for other users because they wouldn't be able to get onto the site. And even if you're a selfish person, the issue is site owners, they put in protections. And so what will happen is you would just get rate limited. And if you get rate limited at best, your scraper will fail and you'll have to wait and you won't be able to get the data anyways. And at worst, your IP will get blacklisted and you'll never be able to access it unless you change your IP or beg the owner of the site to let you on. So it's really crucial that you include this sleep and it, you can play around with this, um, these, these numbers, you can make them a little lower potentially. But again, we want to think about how long we're, we're trying to essentially mimic a human action, right? So how long would it go to go to the site, set our parameters, copy everything, paste it into a spreadsheet, come back, update our parameters, copy it, paste it, etc. right? So that's that's what we're going for. So it's it's important to add that sleep. And then lastly, we would like to know, you know, when the program finishes. And so to do that, remember indentation matters. So I'm going to just tab back and make sure I'm in line with the with the start of the for loop. And here I'm just going to say print complete. And so what this is going to do, it's going to print complete in our in our console and let us know that the program's complete and we can move on. I'm not going to run this right now because I've already run it. This will give you an entire season's worth of, of data. This will give you exactly what we're looking at here. So if we zoom out, our entire scraper is only you know, 20 or 30 lines of code. It's it's really not that long. This, but this is this is all you need to get all of that data. So yeah, that's that's basically it. Now you could take this to the next level. Like I said earlier, if you wanted to, you could make. We're we're only grabbing one season, right? So you could either you could either manually update this URL and these URLs, the from season through seasons, and grab uh, more seasons back and run them or you could make like a gigantic function, um, which I'm not gonna get into now, but essentially you could do like uh, some nested loops in a, in a function where it would update the parameters and you could, you could have it run. But remember, and if we do some quick math here, there were 180, what was 189 days worth of games, right? Um, times, an average of, what is that, 17 and a half seconds, right? Average of 10 and 25, 17 and a half. And what's that give us? That gives us 3,300 seconds. So if we do X divided by 60, that's roughly 55 minutes, right? So yeah, this does take a while. This is, each season is going to take just shy of an hour, 55 minutes. But once you, you write this, and once you get this data, you never have to do it again. So literally you could, you could, you know, and once it's going, you can go off and do other things. So you could set this go and once an hour, come back and update the seasons. And by the end of the day, you could have eight or 10 seasons worth of data. But it is worth noting that uh, don't panic if this like, cause you'll see the asterisk spinning. Um, don't panic if you haven't seen complete, just think about it, right? Because we have to, it, it's pausing for, for an average of 17 and a half seconds, 189 times, which works out to roughly 55 minutes. Yeah, that's that's it. And of, of course you can apply this to, to any sport. This is just, or non-sports. Hopefully this made sense and hopefully you like this video. And again, if you want a text-based version with a little bit more detail, um, especially around some like definitions and things like that, check the link below. Uh, it's a blog post at Action Backers. And as always, Sign up for Action Backers and use code WELCOME20 and you'll get $20 off your first month. 
the the new app is is awesome if i say so myself um we got a ton of models on there and bet tracker and a whole bunch of other stuff check the other videos to see to see the update and again there's a 14 day free trial so give it a spin if you don't like it cancel before your 14 days no worries you won't be charged i'll see you in the next one